everyone. Unfortunately, I will not be able to intend tonight and to introduce our work on large scale optimizations due to personal reasons, but I decided then to have some time right now to record a talk and hopefully to uh, trigger discussions and feel free to reach out if you think that your research is close to what we're doing and at least if you're interested in our research. So my name is Christian Axenia. I'm currently a staff research engineer with um, Huawei Munich Research Center. And today I'm going to talk about some work we've done in looking at how can we optimize large scale systems such as traffic road traffic and how can we do that by exploiting physics and high dimensional representations of the data and in in my talk i will focus on two parts so the first part will look at how can we use physics of traffic in order to extra extract the periodic allocation of the traffic light signals and how can we control that by using a distributed representation of the data and the control mechanism that is able to push the system despite disturbances to desired dynamics. In the second part, we'll look at a different approach which is exploiting the causal relation in traffic data, looking at green time allocation, so basically how much green time you allocate and the flow of cars. Of course, the goal is to maximize the flow of cars given the amount of time you have available. But basically, we want to short circuit this calculation, how much green time should we allocate given this and this and this many features of traffic, uh, traffic at the current stage. So basically, we look at how can we use distributed representation and associative memories to be able to short circuit the whole Optimization methods typically used for such a uh, problem. I'm going to start with um, looking at what we at Huawei right now work in terms of traffic control. So we have uh, a service called Traffic Co, which is sold in our cloud infrastructure, and we pass for different assets of traffic control. We look at traffic prediction, we look at road network analysis. Accident monitoring and control, and continuous monitoring the parameter awareness of the, of the system. But what we're going to we're gonna talk today is traffic light optimization. So we'll have two systems: this Obelisk system and Tramesino system, which take a different uh, perspective of a traffic control, where they use the common noun, which is the distributed representation and the spike in the level computation, to optimize traffic. And I guess we are all familiar with such images. Um, so this is traffic in China. And when we look at the traffic problem in general, we know that there is a physics, not the physics of the cars running everywhere at the intersection, but the physics of how the traffic lights signals are allocated. So we know that there are traffic phases and traffic cycles. Basically, in a cycle, you allocate or you allow all the traffic lights in our intersection here to be green, and this event happens periodically. And what if we can extrapolate from the problem we see right now and try to model a control system that's able to exploit this periodic behavior? Well, that would be neat, especially because we can basically look at the space time physics of traffic from this perspective. So we have a road traffic network. With a certain geometry, then we look at a single simple cell, which is pairs of crosses. Um, we have a northbound cross and a southbound cross. And what we typically see in traffic control are these diagrams. Well, these diagrams are nothing else than space time diagrams. You see here on the system, as I plan a signal cycle, then you have space between the intersection and the order. And what you see here are like Time space time and from the signal coordinates. So basically, when the green and red time are allocated, we, just, we remove the amber just for the sake of the example. But we see that in order to be able to build a platoon of vehicles going from one to the other, there will be an offset between the green time allocations, subsequent green time allocations. 
location in a certain intersection. If you want to have more details about the overall setup and the details, I invite you to check the, the link below, which is a link to our paper in ECML 2021. Now if you want to exploit this syntax, so basically we can take a single intersection and we call it called Northwest, East and South as being the actual state of the traffic. What we have here at a single cross of traffic, so basically traffic traffic lights have a certain have a certain period for actually allocating green time. What we want to achieve through our system is we want to make sure that all these oscillators connected to each uh, or at least periodically, the visual traffic lights are in consensus. Basically, we want to ensure that we don't have any accidents, and we also maximize the flow towards to but uh, to to an intersection. So we look at this oscillatory dynamics, and we model this oscillatory dynamics through oscillator systems. But what are these oscillators? Well, in physics, oscillators are systems which are described by simple equations like this one. Oh, it's nothing fancy. So if we look at here, we have the amount of green time we want to allocate for a light, and we have the frequency of the certain oscillator, how often the green light comes. Then we have the flow of cars passing, because we discussed about the fact that we want to maximize the flow of cars. And of course, we have the connections with outer traffic lights in the same intersection or within a region. And then we have external factors, which typically comes up perturbations, for example, imposing the maximum cycle time per phase. Per phase is a, is a unit in which all the traffic lights in the intersection will be able to send green signal. And the, and the cycle time is typically bound to 120 seconds. Then we have also external perturbations, which are typically things imposed by law. And to this, this system is actually pretty simple. So each of the oscillators will have some internal properties. So this is the frequency of how often a certain traffic light actually allocates green. Then we have the network coupling because we have multiple of these oscillators communicating with each other. So we basically have a long range spatial interaction and short range temporal interaction. And we have, we have, of course, the external coupling, which brings us a lot of uncertainty. If we want to look inside the at the dynamics, basically you can see this simple toy example, which we have a simple network with five by five oscillators, each one connected in this layout. Basically, each circle is an oscillator, and then X, each oscillator responds to a certain cross, to an entire cross. And in order to get an intuition about what the system does, it's basically looking at the B panel. So, Given that each of the oscillators starts from an initial random condition, given network coupling, the internal dynamics, and the external perturbations, the system will be able to convert to consensus, consensus after a certain amount of time. So basically, the system will reach a state in which all the adjacent oscillators have a found a solution such that each of the oscillators has its own offset with respect to that we calculated. And to get more precise, basically what we look at is we look at the diagram in which each of the oscillators starts from the initial condition. And what happens when the dynamics of the network starts like uh, coming in given the external data, basically the flow of cars coming and the initial frequency of the oscillator, basically what it happens is that all the oscillators will come into agreement to consensus, and as we see here, the network dynamics will converge. And when the network converge, basically we have an estimate of how far each of the oscillators will be with respect to the others in terms of when to allocate green time. To make it more practical, we look at the panel C, where we actually have a one, one oscillator to oscillator connection in our case 5x5 five five network. And then what we see there is the time to synchronization. So it's a matrix that demonstrates like showing how much time one oscillator needs to reach consensus with respect to the other. So basically, what would be the time offset you need to allocate 
one oscillator to reach consensus. And in our case, this is what we want to control. We want to control the offset of each oscillator representing a traffic line such that we increase the flow of cars passing through where this oscillator is responsible for. And typically we look at some key performances. So for example, we have the flow of cars and what we see here in the normal traffic on a, on a long day, we have a normal traffic which is around 80 cars, um, whereas when we have the disrupted disruptions like accident, rerouting of the traffic or bad weather, we have really high increases in traffic as we can see here these two peaks. And typically these increases are augmented because they're like nine o'clock when people go to work and like after 1800 when people go back home. So basically you already have high patterns of, of traffic flow, you have like high values of traffic flow. But then, when there are disruptions of you, you know, like accidents or bad weather, exaggerate, like jumps to the roof. This is also visible in the time loss. Basically, the time loss in seconds in a normal day it averages around like 90 seconds, basically, depending on the trip and depending on the time of day. But of course, when there's disruption, like you know, before, there will be like huge jumps, especially at these times, representing peak hours in the, in the working days, in the town, for example. Our solution in order to compensate or to, to, or to handle such a high frequency oscillation and a direct disruption is to actually introduce a control mechanism. So what you see here is the same equation, so we have the internal properties, we have the network coupling between the oscillators representing a traffic line, then we have the external coupling, what we have available is, or what we added, is the regularizing control law. In our case, in this instance, we can use a slightly more control because it's robust features in handling uncertainties and model dynamics, and basically, with the price of a high frequency switching of the controller, we are able to kind of compensate for the surplus energy of one oscillator because the surplus energy accounts for the offset. So we try to compensate for the offset such as we bring the oscillators faster to agreement in the visual depiction. We, we start from initial condition and what happens is that the system will actually push the, the dynamics of the system towards a sliding surface which is the, the robust dynamics or the desired dynamics of periodic, simple periodic behavior with a certain offset. To get more details, we look at the practical example we consider eight intersection in China. And what we have here is a comparison between the time loss in normal traffic, basically there are no disruptions, then we have time loss and disruptions without control. So we have the red trace and we see what we saw before. We have the high frequency oscillation depending on um, the time of day of course and the type of disruption. And then we have the time loss with sliding control which with the green trace you see that the control mechanism brings down the value towards the desired dynamics which is typically dictated by the normal behavior over the day. In order to get an insight we, the control mechanism acts on two time scales. We have the slow time scale of the flow data, which is injected in the system. So basically, each oscillator receives, basically, typically from a camera, which is a number of cars passing, and we get that value inside, and we have a fast time scale, time scale of the network of oscillators, which ingest its value, and each of the oscillators, given the constraints it has available with, the, uh, with other oscillators connected to, and uh, the external perturbations will compute an offset value. So what you see here for each of the samples on the slow time scale of, of the flow data, you have fast time scale of oscillators. These are each of the traces corresponds to a certain oscillator respond to each of one oscillator per direction, five crosses with four and three crosses with directions. And what we have here at the time of day, for example, at nine o'clock, we will have a okay, different values of the offsets for each of the intersections here, for each of the oscillators associated to the intersection. And we see that different times of day will, will yield different 
offset calculation because uh, these are based on the overall internal dynamics of an oscillator represented in traffic light, the coupling between the traffic light oscillators, the external perturbations, and of course the disruption in flow. And in order to implement such a system, basically what we will look at is how can we take this system and implement it efficiently in, in a distributed fashion. So what we then we looked at the neuroengineering framework and Lemongo as an implementation um, uh, environment. And we took the dynamics of this that we, we shown earlier, the dynamics of um, the oscillatory behavior plus the control and we plant it in the neural engineering framework and basically we have multiple neural populations connected to each other in, in the network for example in this case we took the actual as the flow of cars and we have a population which is responsible to encode all the uh, time series in a distributed pattern what you see here is just the output to, to visualize that and then what we have is we combine the controller and the, the periodic dynamics of the oscillators in a network which is able to benefit from the control and keep the time loss to an average with the price we pay for the high frequency oscillation of command control. control. But you see that the robust objects, the, the dynamics of the oscillator plus the control, whereas the obvious is just the dynamics of the oscillator itself, is able to improve the time loss. Uh, KPI of our system for the system with the agent And what you see here, there are like the spike indicated in the neural activation in the population of neurons we discussed. So we have like 100 neurons per population, each one encoding one of the directions. And so we have like one population encoding internal dynamics, one population encoding the, the, yeah, the adjacency is coupling, then we have one population encoding. The external perturbations and one responsible for the control regularized return. Just to give you a glimpse, though, basically what happens here is we have this external frequency, so we have like the internal dynamics of the system, we have the external perturbations coming from the, from the police and so basically the cycle time and so on. We have the control of the oscillators. This is how the architecture looks like. So what we have here is just a simple dummy. dynamics of the oscillator system given that we have a controller which is responsible to bring the system to the perturbation, bring the system back to the desired dynamics which is responsible to provide a solution to the optimal offset for the adjacent traffic flights in the interception. As we see the effect of the controller and the effects of the controller and the external perturbations on the internal dynamics of the oscillator encoding or capturing the periodic dynamics of the system. If we look at experiments, basically, we also published the uh, real-world data set, which contains 60 days of real urban traffic from the process in China. This is the layout of the, of the, of the uh, region. And what we look at are three uh, metrics for traffic performance, which is the speed of the car, the time loss, and the waiting time. And in order to compare our system with state of the art, we looked at the baseline, which are the practically the static plans offered by the police, which is a lookup table, which can tell us for each street and each traffic light what will be the green time allocated each time. Then we have the MILP, which is the multi integral linear program, which is a state of the art approach, optimizing constraint optimization based approach to calculate offsets. Then we have the obelisk approach, which is our system implemented first without the controller using, using the neural engineering framework, then implemented in a simple ODE fashion. Then we take a single oscillator, basically the dynamics we saw in the past, past slides. We have a single oscillator, not the network. Basically, we exclude all the external dynamics of coupling and long-term spatial or like long-range spatial interactions and short-range temporal interaction. Then we have a single oscillator for the entire system. Then we have the robust obelisk, which is the controller plus the obelisk, which is implemented in ODEs or NES. And as we see, the robust obelisk excels at all of the, uh, the metrics because, of course, it can capture the periodic behavior of the traffic light dynamics 
plus controlling it given the disturbances. So basically, you make sure that the system, whenever there is a disruption, is put to the desired dynamics of consensus between the oscillators representing each traffic line. And when we look at the runtime, basically, because of the efficient implementation of the neural engineering framework of Python neural networks, we get one fact, one order of magnitude better result or a faster runtime in single cross or also region based, like in eight intersections with each cross, as we shown in the diagram of the real world data set. Now, we discussed about Obelis, so a system which is able to exploit to model and exploit the periodic dynamics of traffic and then using a nonlinear control mechanism being able to enforce the offset calculation towards an optimal solution that maximizes the flow of cars passing. And we did this by using an efficient distributed representation and computation and learning mechanism which is provided by neural engineering framework and Mango in our case as a tool to implement the spike in neural networks and brought us close enough to a system which is um, efficient and robust and is used in production in our cloud infrastructure. So as we saw, traffic, traffic control is a multi-dimensional problem. And if we look at how can we exploit the periodic dynamics, we look at the network of oscillators that will actually extract the periodic spatial and temporal interactions among the different crosses in the network then we use a control mechanism to increase the adaptation capabilities towards consensus in calculating an offset for adhesion traffic lights in an intersection of the region, given high magnitude traffic disruption, so an adaptation capability to handle these changes, abrupt changes in the input data. Then we have a lightweight learning mechanism that exploits these coupling interactions in, in populations of neurons and of course, it's an end-to-end -end system that allows us to model, control, and do inference with a proper potential for real-world deployment. Well, this is pretty old news because this system is actually right now deployed in the practical solution. If you have more details, I invite you to check out the paper we have there, then there. Uh, it's our paper in ECM of last year. Now, we change a bit the flavor, we change a bit of flavor of, of the, of how is traffic? So instead of looking at the physics of the traffic light itself, we look at the physics of action and consequence. Basically, we look at pairs of green time and number of cars passing. So how many cars pass if I allocate 10 seconds of green time? How many cars pass if I allocate 20 seconds? And if we use some historical information of how many cars pass given a certain amount of green time,
10 seconds allocated and sometimes that's four cards or like 400 cards of that. This also depends on many other factors, for example, time of day, a certain day, a certain number at 9 o'clock in the morning, the same lane will have 100 cars passing in 10 seconds, whereas, of course, exaggerated, whereas in the evening, the same lane will have 10 cars passing in the same amount of allocated green time. So basically, we want to distinguish between these sensitive or like between these differences or like capture them and we use high dimensional representation. In our case, we actually use um, photographic reduced representations. And we do this vector encoding of our quantities, then we do operations in these high dimensional vector encodings like binding and bundling. These are like, actually really useful operations. It will help us later compute similarity. Then we have a learning which is supported by spiking neural networks which are natively processing such large scale distributed representations. And at the end, basically, what we do is compute a similarity to a previously seen situation. So basically, we try the system of historical data with pairs, and then we try to reconstruct based on a partial pattern, basically, of the two quantities, reconstruct what to be a plausible uh, green time allocation for the flow you provided. And this work is part of our work at the AOTG workshop. dimensional vector algebra for so in our problem we have historical data like traffic light ID, face ID, green time and car count. Again this problem can be sent to multiple countries but in this case we just look at the simple 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 case scenario where we look at green time and car count as the quantities of traffic representing causal relations. So what we build is a context. So we build a context of green time and car count basically how much green time was allocated for a certain traffic ride in a certain phase and how many cars passed and our goal is to provide them a new phase and a new car counting through what will be the green time for that. And then okay we get this encoding context vectors we have d-dimensional vector encoding so we look at holographic reduced representations we have molecules in the paper on how the vectors are going to be calculated and also how we add time in the static representation of the high dimensional vectors and then what we want to do is basically when we grab a new value to infer the missing pattern corresponding to the um, green time. So we have the car count, we want to compute the green time. So we want to do manipulations of these high dimensional vectors to compute the similarity of this partial pattern to what we've seen before and stored in our memory. And of course, for that, it's a typical approach to associative memories, and we're going to show how this is actually perform and how this approach with high dimensional vectors and binding and bundling to implement an associative memory actually uh, really works in, in practice. Again we look at the same data set we had before and we use the sumo simulator simulator for urban mobility to, to, to test the, 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 uh, the system and we have again the same eight intersections we have it up here and basically, again, they have the normal traffic, which is the orange trace, uh, and traffic, which is the blue trace. Again, disruptions can be accidents, rerouting, looks like they go well in conditions. And you see that the number of cars, basically, the number of cars will increase, especially in early in the morning at peak time or like after work at 1800, or depending on the conditions, you don't have like high level oscillations of number of cars in a certain region, in our case, in this region. In order to evaluate, we'll look at some key performance indices, and we'll look, in our case, at average trip duration, we'll look at average speed and waiting time. There's three typical factors to evaluate traffic quality. And what is interesting right now, we'll look at just the ranking. What is interesting to see is that the first system in ranking is the ML, which is the multi integral linear program, which again is an optimization based system which provides optimal solutions given the, the input data. And we see that there's like basically optimal solution to our okay. And what happens is that from a signal, which is our system, comes to a second place before hope to level, which is again another system implemented for associative memory. And the baseline, which are just the static paths provided by the police, like a lookup table to provide what police gets every day for the last five years. And 
And we see that with a trade-off of less than 30% in average trip duration, less than 10% in average speed, and less than 5% in waiting time, Tramesino is able to come second. But with the price of having the entire computation, the entire constraint optimization typically performed by Mio, the state of the art, shrunk down to a minimal recall from the source to memory. And now to enforce this idea, these are the uh, Basically, what we have here, we have the optimization time, which is effectively accounting for the actual memory call. And the blue stack, or like the blue uh, blocks, are responding to the entire end to end from data collection to the inference to the value output. And we'll just look at right now the optimization time because this is actually really relevant to show that the optimization time in is way slower in terms of. Uh, in, for example, simulation times in, um, in seconds, then the milk, which is the optimal solution. So what we do with our system is a trade-off between optimality of the solution and speed of the solution. Because in our case, we have to react fast enough to changes in traffic and still absorb the information while uh, data is, is available, then we, we made it like a decision to actually put more weight on the speed of the system rather than the accuracy. Given that, the accuracy will actually level out you so that the waiting time and um, the average speed were not deviating too much with the decision we took for, for such a fast system. Now, if we look at the encoding and decoding accuracy of promising numbers basically it's a known fact. So if we look at using a, a, a short memory base of 128 dimensional factors, we saw that after 100 memories, 200 memories, the performance starts to degrade. Whereas when we use larger memories, like 1024, as we used in our experiment, basically the performance stays uh, stays good and we don't lose information because right now in the high dimensional representation we are able to distinguish these special cases when we have only two features of the traffic encoded yet not many to be able to still distinguish which are plausible scenarios based on previous experience basically the association or um, the recall from the associated memory will be of a higher quality and if we sum up what we looked at in the second part of my talk, we well, basically looked at Tramesino, which is a system which exploits the causal relation between uh, quantities in traffic, describing traffic. And these quantities are like, for example, in our simple case, we have like traffic flow and um, allocated green time. So basically, how many cars pass given the amount of green time allocated in your traffic line? And of course, traffic is highly nonlinear and unpredictable. Yeah, but we, what we need to know is that we have to have timely actions. And instead of actually going to the whole pipeline of doing the optimization, instead of optimization, given all the input data and all the other data we have available, Basically, what happens if you only look at the relevant causal relations, like actual consequences here within the traffic data? In our simple scenario, we have the green time versus traffic count. And use such patterns to basically build the memory mechanism, in which we can store traffic patterns and retrieve plausible decisions that we made, that we might, we might optimize traffic based on previous experience. Again, there will be mechanisms to decide which one is a plausible, which one is not a plausible, which was the quality decision to take, and which is not. In order to benefit for such a system, we actually need to implement it in a way that we can benefit from traffic learning in manipulating traffic data. And we do this by using high dimensional vectors on spike in neural networks because of the benefits they have to store large quantities of such patterns and flexibility and accuracy in recalling such patterns 
Y bueno, ahí está, ahí está, ahí está, ahí está, ahí está, Finally, this system comes an alternative to optimization-based systems to learn temporal regularities in traffic data and adapt to the changes while keeping computation efficient and fast. If you would like to have more details, please check the paper at ALTD at ECML last year and we'll be happy to discuss. So, one more time, sorry for not being able to attend personally tonight. And I'm really hoping that people in the community will have questions or feel free to reach out if uh, you find this inter research interesting. There are like touching points in your research and looking forward for um, a new event in the BSA online. And thanks for, for the invitation, Evgeny. All the best and looking forward for the next talks. Bye-bye.